Hello and welcome to the episode number 6 of Getting Started with Houdini and in this one we will be actually taking a look at how to um, model using curves, how to use resamples, conversions, how to use the uh, conversions to NURBS, curves, polygons, back again, how to skin, revolve and do other cool stuff inside of Houdini. So as you can see, we have a little bit of a... As per usual, I will show you how to do things a little bit of a theory and then we will end up with a little bit of a practice. And of course, we will import everything into Unreal Engine and build this little scene. By the way, if you're interested in getting the assets, consider subscribing to the Patreon. Or if you're not interested in subscriptions, you might get it from the Gumroad page. So without further ado, let's get going. All right, so let's start to work with the curves, surfaces and conversions and other things that will help us to model our geometry. First things first, as per usual, let's go and save conversions and modeling with curves. So let's first talk about just conversions. Let's create a geometry, go, in, oops, go inside and start typing line. I like to start with the line because it's pretty much the first thing we can talk about and it's uh, easier to understand that way. So let's enable the display points and those are really small. So we'll go to the guides, make the point marker six. So you see on the YouTube a little bit better. As you can see, if I increase the number of points, you'll see those bright blue points. So what do we do? We can have three points, right? We talked about that in the one of the first videos of introduction to Houdini. However, uh, we did not stop discussing a lot of things. So let's talk a little bit. First, as you can see, our primitive type is polygon. We can have it as NURBS. We can have it as Bezier, as points, just points or just polygons. However, what I want to do is polywire it down the line somewhere and see how it actually behaves. So if we now, okay, uh, let's preview this. If we now press S and, whoops, two, and press T, now we can uh, move our point around, as you can see, and our polywire rebuilds itself. So that's, you know, that's nothing new, right? We could do that previously as well. Let's increase the number of divisions so it kind of looks a little bit better. Okay, but if we actually convert this polygon into something else, for example, we convert from any type, we convert to, not polygon, but in our case, NURBS curve, you will see that in fact, we have our kind of straight edge curve converted into a smooth one. So that's pretty cool. And then we can see that polywire doesn't work because it actually works on edges. However, this is a NURBS curve. It's not an edge. How do we do that? Well, we can do it with a resample, convert it back with a resample, which does what it says. And of course, we actually stopped on this and we talked about this a little bit already. So this is the resample. That's, that's pretty nice. We can resample it by polygon edge if we have uh, more points denser to each other or not. However, the other way would be actually to convert it back from, again, from curves, NURBS curve. Again, it will take from any type back to polygon. Let's see what happens. And we can now tweak the definition or the resolution of the conversion as well here. So I sometimes do the resample, sometimes I do the convert. Uh, usually I personally prefer the convert, but resample is okay as well. So you can use any you want. And of course, going back to our polywire, we can see that indeed we have our tube following our lines. And of course, if we tweak our geometry, you'll see that it rebuilds itself on the fly. Naturally, if we, for example, increase the number of points and we start editing, maybe select here. If we move the points around, another point, naturally, because I have increased the number of points to five, you'll see that we first convert this to NURBS curve, then we convert it back to the polygon, right? And then, of course, it creates a polywire that we desire. 
There we go. All right, so that was the line. Really, really useful. Of course, you can copy to points on the line and do whatever you want. However, let's talk about a little bit of a different thing. Let's talk about the grid. Of course, let's make the size one by one because this is a little bit too much. And let's say we need six rows and six columns. Select, press S, press 4, press T, and let's have this thing going on. All right, so you can do just the subdivide, right? It will basically create the subdivided surface. However, what we can do, because subdivision, all right, so if we make the subdivision, we cannot control the number of uh, resulting faces because those are being dictated by initial resolution of our grid. So if we had six by six, uh, subdividing it once, right, we'll have, for example, here, we have 25 polygons. Here we have 100 polygons, four times more. Now we have 200 polygons. Oh, well, no, actually, 400 polygons. My method is, uh, yeah, I'm a genius mathematician. Um, and uh, so what I'm trying to say is subdivision increases the amount of polygons by four. But if we convert it first to NURBS curve, oops, no surface, my bad. And then we convert it back to polygons. We can actually say how many, how much of the resolution should be retained or again resampled by U or by V directions. So really useful. Of course, as you can imagine, we can just move our points around and you will see that we can pretty easily create a sort of like a black hole polywire, kind of like a really, really cheap black hole visualization, right? And create something like write this Asimov and we'll have the book cover. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that says a lot about me, doesn't it? Anyway, subdivide this, maybe a couple of times, um, polywire, increase the number of segments. So anyway, you get what I'm saying, right? You get, you get the point. We have this kind of physics visualization thing using just literally a couple of converts and moving our face around. Of course, we can scale, rotate, do whatever we want. All right, cool. The next classic kind of thing, let me delete this. Oh, um, delete this. Let's press the L to layout and move it away. All right, so next classic thing, I think those tutorials were from like 3D Studio Max 2000, 2001, and basically um, at the end of 90s, in the beginning of 2000s, the 3DS Max was kind of popular for modeling, and there was this new thing, modeling with NURBS, naturally, that's what we're doing. And of course, there was a tutorial on creating chess pieces, right? And that's what we're gonna do. Again, uh, I hold down the space bar, two, three, four, five. Let's press space bar three to get to the front and I will enable the grid snapping so that the first point that I place will be basically snapping to the grid. All right, so let's start to make some sort of thing. By the way, I create this right now by holding down the left mouse button. Okay, and we are done. Press enter, cool. All right, so the curve, if you just go to like select, whoops, select to T, you will see that we actually are in the editing mode now. That's not what we want. Whoops, uh, that's not what we want. What we want is actually press, whoops, uh, press, if you have not selected curve yet, and if you do not see this, all you gotta do is, whoops, uh, is click this button or press enter, and you will be in the mode of actually working with the curve. So let's select this select edit mode. Now we can select those points and move them around. But first, let's actually do the thing that we wanted, and it's called revolve. 
and already you see the result. So that's pretty decent already. And by the way, as a bonus, it created relatively okay UVs so that you can uh, save a little bit of time UVing your things. All right, so what, what I wanna do, um, actually, let's enable curve, get, get back to the front view, because if you're not in the front view, if you start moving those points around, they will be not moving in the flat space as in the 2D space of our front view, but they will be starting to move in the 3D space and you know, it's a recipe for a disaster. So yeah, disable the snap into grid again, space bar three in the front view. And now we can start editing this. Now, what can we do? Again, you know, we are in the select edit mode. We can select this thing and Kind of like in the CAD application, we can do the beveling. Or we can do, whoops, all right, control Z a number of times. That fixed the thing. Uh, we can do it like the curves, kind of like in a vector editor, right? And uh, we'll basically play around. You just, if you know how to use those in Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer or any other curve editor, or maybe in Fusion 360 or whatever, this will be relatively familiar to you. We can collapse those back, we can uncollapse them. So that's a lot of buttons you can click, a lot of things you can play with. I personally prefer doing the filleting like in the Fusion 360 or any other CAD application. And of course, if we revolve, you'll see that Again, it perfectly follows our fillet. Whoops. And of course, we can do this to pretty much all of the other points so that our geometry looks a little bit better. Let's see. I think it's a little bit too much. Kind of like this will look better. And here. ever so slightly. I actually do not see this because it is inside, right? If you don't see it, just go back to your editing of your curve. And finally, we can revolve. Now, revolve, what it will do is, well, as the name suggests, it will revolve the profile around itself and creates geometry out of it. However, you will notice that this geometry looks really, really coarse. It's very kind of not really well defined. So what do we do? Again, whoops, not reverse, convert, convert to, all right. So we convert this and of course we can now tweak the definition of conversion of our curve into the polygon. As you can see, it kind of really well follows the curvature of our curve and it converts it into a higher definition and when we revolve it we have the really really high def uh, geometry that we kind of want okay so what we can do now is fix those little things i'll press s to select this um, i think i'll press just delete then i again press s three, double click, start typing polyfill, shift enter, and that's the result. That's not the result I really want, basically. What I want is triangle fan, and eventually I want to press E, and scale it down, and this will work fine when we will subdivide our geometry. Let's do this right now. Sub D, shift enter, Okay, press escape, and this looks this looks pretty much perfect. Maybe it's a little bit fat, but that's all right. It, you can tweak it on your own as much as you want, but maybe we can fix it right now. Let's see. Select these ones, shift three, and move them to the left. Check it out. Yep, it's a little bit less fat, so this looks better. Naturally, you can tweak it to the point of how much you personally would want it. All right, so 
that's that's nice. Let's actually start commenting. Color should be a bit darker. Chest piece. Now let's talk a little bit about another way of modeling, which is sweeping and skinning. Uh, let's use one line for this, because one line will be the guide for our backbones. You'll see in a second what I mean. So we have this line, let's make it a little bit longer. Let's enable the viewport, uh, the viewing of our points. And uh, let's actually start talking about skinning first, because it's a little bit more confusing, but let's just talk about it right now. So let's create a grid. The grid will be, I don't know, four by four. And the size will be one by one, or maybe even 0.3 to 0.3, because what we'll do is use grid to, as a profile, to actually get it through our line. Okay, so what I want to do now is S3 T kind of like start, you know, creating some sort of geometry. It's not particularly necessary, but let's just for the sake of this do it. All right, so we have this stuff and now we can copy to points and I'll place the skin. So what we have is Target points to copy to will be our uh, our line. Geometry will be our profile that we just created. Let's transform it. Rotate it, hold control to make the rotation 90. And then we can press the skin and immediately we have a problem. So why is this happening? Because skin is getting confused because it needs only the profiles. However, inside, inside of those profiles, we have different geometry that intersects. So basically, we have to have an angon. To actually create an angon, we can use the new wish addition to the Houdini, which is called Dissolve Labs Dissolve Edges. Where is it? Labs Dissolve Flat Edges. And of course, it does what it says. It dissolves those edges. And now, if we copy, you'll see we only have the profiles and the skinning works as expected. That's nice. Again, what we can do is maybe we can, where is it? We can select this point, move it around and about, convert it to NURBS curve, then convert it, oops, uh, convert it back to polygons. And of course, now we can do the live previews of kind of smooth geometry. And of course, we can make it even more smooth like this. So that's really useful. It, it saves a lot of time when you're modeling anything using this. And of course, let's do the polyfill. As you might already know, polyfill does what it says. Triangles, triangle fan, quadratial fan, or just you know, actually, let's try this. Let's do the poly bevel. You know what we are gonna do now, right? Uh, we're gonna, okay, let's increase the distance and let's ignore the flat edges like this. And if we subdivide, we'll have the subdivision surface that will look relatively distant. So there you go. Pretty smooth, pretty, pretty non-problematic way of modeling. Again, we can back, uh, I mean, go back to editing. Where is it? T, move it around. And of course, it will reveal itself. As, as you can see, it's relatively fast, pretty much real time, so really good. All right, final thing, uh, let's, let's comment on this. Let's make it a little bit Let's call it skinning, skin node. Finally, let's talk about the sweep. The sweep will be actually relatively easier. Let's get this line 
Again, I will make a copy of this. And let's see. Let's create, start to create another curve. Oops. Curve. Okay. Enable view. Press enter. And uh, for this one, we can literally just click around and do whatever we want. It doesn't really matter. It will just be for the purpose of kind of showing it what's going on. So what we're going to do now is type sweep, backbones, cross section, and we are done. Now, of course, we can go back to our curve. We can select all of these, make them filleted a little bit. Let's see. All right. Yeah, this, this fillet doesn't allow it to go further. Oh, no, it actually does. Okay, this looks pretty good. And of course, we can then convert it, as you know. And we can now tweak the visions in the V or in the U and have our geometry pretty much perfect. Now, what I want to do is transform this. Of course, if you transform your profile, you will see that the profile gets rotated, right? And you can actually have your geometry oriented the way you want. Naturally, if you start tweaking the line, it will rebuild as well without a problem, without a hitch. Again, convert to NURBS curve and can convert it back. Tweak the resolution, thicken both directions, 001. As you can see, everything looks kind of kind of nice, right? Of course, we can do the poly bevel, you know the drill, exclusions, ignore flat edges. Uh, let's make, actually, I'll show you a little thing. Uh, we can, using, again, using normals, that will be face weighted. we do the poly bevel of the small distance like this it will actually look really really smooth however I think we need to increase the resolution of this okay so there was a little bit of a problem because our curve was a little bit overly defined however I just kind of fixed it by decreasing the resolution of the of our line and if we sweep that, and we thicken that, and we place the normal and reverse it, you will see that it kind of looks weird, right? We subdivide it, and then we place the normal again, so kind of fix the normals. You will see that we finally have our thing nice and ready. So again, if we transform it, you'll see that we can actually move it around however we want. So the other interesting thing about Sweep, again, is that it can actually create UVs. You will see if I should press space bar 5. And of course, if we just look at the Sweep, you'll see that indeed some, indeed some UVs have been created. And they will be shown in the Unreal Engine as well. So what I, what I want to do now, I guess, is transform it like this. You know what? Let's do it in another transformation. This is uh, this is getting a little bit out of hand. So let's scale it slightly. Maybe rotate it like this. I'm not sure. I just wanna I just wanna see what will happen when we are trying to create our geometry inside of Unreal Engine. I think this will do. The only thing I wanna do is maybe move this up and move. Uh, maybe actually have another point. Go to edit, select, transform M up. This one, transform T down, and this one there. Eh, this this should do just fine. And yeah, that's that. And I think we're ready to export it. And don't forget to divide it into the triangles after you have done the normals and everything else. And of course, FBX, drop, shift, enter. Let's, let's say hip, it will be the ribbon. 
FBX. Don't forget to uncheck export in the ASCII format. Control C. Control V. <laughs> Delete this. Um, and let's see. That's not what I want. Yep, here we go. Connect this and call this chess piece. Press save to disk. I'm not sure if I could press here, save to disk. And uh, that should be good. The next thing we wanna do is fire up the Unreal Engine and see what's what imported and build a little scene. All right, so we are in the Unreal Engine 5 and let's start importing our things. Don't forget you have to disable, remove the generates, reverse index buffer. By the way, I'm not sure if we actually divided our geometry first, but you know what, let's just first import it. Whoops, uh, simple drag and drop will do. Okay, uh, uncheck reverse index buffer, uncheck remove the generates, um, uncheck this stuff, and in the import, we can do the uniform scale 100 because meters to centimeters requires the upscale of 100 times. Okay, so chest piece is here. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. And let's start actually starting, a, create a little material. So metal pieces map. Press enter. Here it is. V for parameter for the color. Diffuse, S for scalar, metalness, all right, and for roughness. Um, I think we'll have like a metallic with a roughness of 0. Uh, I don't know, 4 or something like this. And I want the chest piece to be kind of yellow or orange-ish color. Let's save this and apply it to our chest piece and see what we have. Here it is. It's kind of gold actually, not really orange, but you know, uh, we can tweak it a little bit later. And of course, later we can create a material instance. And if it will be not chess pieces, but you know what? Instance ribbon. We can rename it later as well. So double click. I want this to be kind of, kind of like deep blue-ish. Maybe like this. Happy colors for a change, right? So let's import our ribbon. FBX, import all. Let's start building our crazy simple scene. So here we get, here it is. First, I will decrease uh, the field of view or actually increase the field of view, but decrease the lens, optical length. All right, so scale in the, okay, it's in the y-axis, kind of like this, make it purple, make a number of copies. Again, this is not mandatory at this point, you can just skip it if you like, but you know, if you want to skip for the rides and get to the final piece, this will be fine. All right, so already I see a little bit of a problem with our chest piece, it doesn't look right, so what we're going to do is normals create uh, 180 because it's subdivision right and then divide because we need to have triangles and then we save the disk go back to unreal engine press reimport and it's looking perfect all right cool metalness roughness all right so roughness can be a little bit higher i'm not sure okay the position of the lights was a little bit weird, so it wasn't looking right to me personally. So again, a couple of copies here, select everything, shift alt, I mean, um, press alt, start moving around, select all those ribbons, I think, and increase the scale. Let's do two by two by two. I think it's a little bit dark. Maybe it's the metalness, really shiny. And there you go. Um, maybe I'll continue tweaking it a little bit. All right, so this is the result of me tweaking it. If I press F, I can now just rotate around this whole thing. And it's looking pretty good. I tweaked our initial geometry a little bit, as you can see, it looks kind of different. 
But I think you can achieve this result as well, so should not be a problem. Hopefully you had fun modeling using curves and conversions. If you want, if you're interested in learning more, consider subscribing. If you have ideas, suggestions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. As per usual, I'm hoping to see you in the next videos and hope you have a nice day. See you later. Bye-bye.